ammo used in this video was brought to you by Nosler, maker of the most innovative, most accurate, and most effective bullets and ammunition in the industry. If someone asked you, what is the most iconic handgun in American history? Many of you would immediately say the 1911, but I have a sneaking suspicion that some of you would say the Browning High Power. The Browning High Power is one of the most widely used military pistols in history. FN, or Fabrique Nationale, if you want to be fancy, told the guy who invented the 1911, John Moses Browning, hey, look, your little 1911 is cute and all, but we need you to design a compact handgun with a hammer, a magazine disconnect, and a lever safety. And it has to hold at least 10 rounds of 9mm. And the Browning High Power was born. Before you finish watching this video, a word from our sponsor. Have you ever thought about making a living in the firearms industry? If you enjoy gun repair, ballistics, and learning about firearms, Sonoran Desert Institute's online courses might just be a good fit for you. To find out more, visit sdi.edu or call 480-999-4767 today. The high power was produced for 82 years until FN stopped producing them in 2018. Then in 2022 at SHOT Show, they announced this. The new FN High Power, a modern take on the original Browning High Power. FN did with this new High Power what Mercedes did with the new G-Wagon. They modernized the looks while maintaining its classic design. This High Power looks like it's been in the gym and made some gains. When you hold this High Power and then hold the original, the original almost feels kind of fragile. The original High Power has a very elegant look where this new version looks attractively brutish. Think Jason Statham in The Rock's character in the movie Hobbs and Shaw. The Rock would clearly pick the new version and Jason would go for the original. Personally, from a look standpoint, I can appreciate the original, but I prefer the new version, which is a bit odd considering I related more to Jason Statham's character more than I did The Rock. But I think I'm abusing the Hobbs and Shaw analogy at this point, so I'll move on. I think the new gun looks like the old gun while also looking completely different. I'm sure all of the hardcore Browning high power purists who were born in the fucking 80s but act like they fought in World War II are having an aneurysm right now because I just said that. But it's the truth. No one looks at the new gun and not think Browning high power, whether you want to admit it or not. It's a very rounded off gun with very few sharp edges. Ergonomically, it feels like you're holding a slim boat paddle. The safety is so intuitive, using it is borderline cathartic. I often found myself unconsciously flicking it on and off repeatedly like people who bounce their leg up and down when they're sitting, like a nervous tick of sorts. The mechanical feel of the slide going back and forth will never get old. The gun has a solid, dense weight to it that completely absorbs the recoil of the 9mm. The gun is also very balanced, so transitioning from target to target feels effortless. But what really surprises me was how well the gun carried. Yes, it's bigger than the original, but it's muscle weight, not fat weight. The weight is the same, but it looks and feels different. Again, I attribute that to how balanced the gun feels. The trigger on the Browning High Power wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. The trigger on the FN High Power was a real joy to use, however. It's such an elegant looking trigger that it invites you to just touch it. This is a single action gun, so the trigger break is most definitely 4K crispy. I like this gun, a lot actually, but not for all the typical gun review reasons I stated before this part of the video. I don't get the impression that this gun is trying to be a tactical wet dream. And I don't think people who would buy this gun want it to be. You buy this gun for the same reason we use copper cups for Moscow mules. Sure, we all know copper is a good conductor of temperature which keeps the drink colder for longer. But who are we fooling? I've had Moscow mules in a glass before and my drink was no more in danger of becoming warm than I am of losing a toe to frostbite living in Texas. We used a copper cup because seeing a beautiful copper colored mug with an ambiguously spoiled lime hanging off the edge of it makes the drinking experience that much better. That's what this FN high power is. It's the copper mug to my Moscow mule shooting experience. For all its age related shortcomings, the original Browning high power was a good gun to shoot. This new FN high power now elevates that shooting experience 
where you don't have to worry about getting things like hammer bite, where the sights are actually usable, the trigger is improved, and the gun's ergonomics and looks are such that you feel like you're shooting something familiar, but refreshingly new and exciting. The crazy thing is, shooting the original makes me appreciate the new high power, and shooting the new high power makes me respect what the original was. You know, we talk a lot about empowerment in this country, except for when it comes to the Second Amendment. However, I can't think of anything more empowering than having the most effective tool to protect you and your family. So help me spread this message by liking and sharing this video with everyone you know. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment because the Second Amendment, when it said militia, it wasn't talking about the government. It was talking about you. Also, if you want to know where to find the I'm the Militia shirt and merchandise, click the I'm the Militia link in the description section of this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, make sure you hit that bell symbol.